I saw the Northern Lights 11 years ago for the first time. This happened in Lapland, the Northern Finland. I have seen the lights hundreds of times ever since. Yet, Nadia and I are still chasing them. But it is no longer about seeing them. It's about experiencing them. For this we are going to a very remote place with unique surroundings. And place where there will be no likely other people. The idea of this trip is to enhance the experience using the synergy effect of the beauty of the place. With this film we're gonna share with you probably our best experience of Northern Lights ever. Nadia and I have been working as wilderness guides for almost a decade now. And one of our main specialities was chasing the lights. For all these years we were pushing our boundaries so we can become one with nature. And not just to see, but to feel the Northern Lights. How to explain this with other words? Imagine you are reading a book in an overcrowded railway station. Now imagine you're reading that book in a beautiful old library. So this is our approach for the Northern Lights and other aspects of life too. For instance, you can see Aurora from the city center of every Nordic town. But only when you go to the nature and see them from there, you will know what I mean. Will we see the Northern Lights tonight? Regardless of our experience, we don't know. 
But I can already give you a piece of advice for when you plan your own Aurora night. Northern Lights should never be your primary goal on your Northern Lights trip. Yes, you heard me right. If the lights are your only focus, you might end up very disappointed. This is why you should focus on the overall experience. The hike, the sound of the snow, the sunset, the view, the evening next by the fire. And this is already quite a lot. Then, if the lights come, take them as a plus, a gift to your already amazing experience. If the lights, however, don't show up, then you'd still have the smile on your face. I love the silence and I enjoy my solitude. My definition of a party is reading a book in wooden cabin next to the fireplace. I'm most likely an introvert, but I'm not sure about that. That's why this kind of experience I do either alone or with a very few special people. For this party there was only one invitation, for Nadia. The atmosphere just couldn't feed any more people. Aurora Borealis came around 11 p.m. But a strong wind also came along because of the rising temperature. Or the other way around. During the day the temperature was minus 20, but in the evening jumped to minus 5. But it felt even colder than before, because of the wind. Anyway, Aurora joined the party and we had no right to complain about anything. Now I would like to tell you about a dream that I had for many years in mind. I was dreaming about taking a very special photo of Aurora Borealis. I wanted to find a cabin in the woods, light up a candle inside and have beautiful northern lights. I wanted to take photo of this, but as if this wasn't enough, I had a special composition request. My wish was to get the Northern Lights to perform as if they're coming out from the chimney. No, I'm not greedy. I'm just a kid who believes in the unlimited power of the Creator. So, did I get that shot? Did my dream come true? What do you think? To find out, you have to watch until the end. Sorry, I hope you don't mind.
<clears throat> we are very tired. It was a really long day. It's already 2 a.m. I think we will remember this day forever, not only because of the footage that we took, but it was one of these special days in many ways from the morning uh, when we on our way here on our way here uh, it was very rare event to have this fresh powder snow without any other tracks uh, I mean that we were the first one to come to certain place the feeling walking on this uh, uh, powder snow with the uh, forest keys was uh, like probably like walking on clouds. I never walked on clouds, but I, I believe it's the same feeling. And then this evening with amazing northern lights, they were so strong that we could see them from all the sides. Anywhere we looked, up, down, left, right, 360 degrees northern lights uh, maybe you notice on the video also different colors than green although most of the time northern lights are green I would say maybe 99% of the time tonight we were lucky enough to see some purple a little bit red northern lights this is very very rare occasion now we have this satisfactory feeling of um, mission completed because it's not easy to see the northern lights you have to be looking so many ways and so many things need to cooperate and work together at the right place at the right time so and you have to be at that place at the right time so you you get to see them <laughs> we feel very very fortunate and uh, we are so happy to spend the night in this wooden cabin at the middle of nowhere of course we could see ourselves that the place is very special but when I flew the drone and saw the perspective from a bird eye uh, it, it, really, it really looks stunning it's uh, one fell and the hut is right at the middle and all over as far as you can see is just forest and we are here in the middle in this wooden cabin made the fire it's super cozy this experience is touching my soul it got very windy in the evening it made it feel very chilly and very challenging to take photos and videos outside but it was all worth it the effort the effort was worth it now we're gonna try to get some sleep and get ready for the sunrise
So you made coffee? Mm -hmm. Let's try it. For me, the most exciting thing in the morning is to get the camera that spent the night outside and to check what was happening. Because it's uh, like, uh, I don't know, probably similar to leaving a fishing rod mm -hmm. in the <laughs> river for overnight and then, and then in the morning we go to check if there is something. We've got uh, 1,500 photos taken, which is extremely a lot. <laughs> Usually Nikon cannot manage more than three, 400 photos when it's very cold and uh, it's just the battery doesn't last longer. When it's, when it's minus 20, I think the maximum is 300 photos, but uh, last night it was minus with a feeling of minus 15 because of the wind and uh, <coughs> I put these hand warmers all over and the battery lasted longer so uh, we just checked and there are amazing shots amazing things were happening while, while we were sleeping mm -hmm. <laughs> the regret we missed out no <laughs> we saw enough mm -hmm. yeah, it was time to sleep and it's actually uh, very interesting indescribable feeling to go to sleep in a place like this and then in the time lapse to see what was happening all over you it's some, some magic was happening while while we were sleeping uh, traditional why is it on a pool mm -hmm. it smells as if we just baked it here yeah I like if we are in uh, some coffee shop a bakery. And I see some desserts coming. Mm -hmm. What's this? Never seen anything like this before. Mm, it's banana with chocolate. I don't know if it's uh, Finnish or American thing or international. That's pretty common in here. For sure it's not Bulgarian thing. <laughs> and you made ho coffee. How did you manage? Some There's some pre-made bags and you just pour water. Yeah. Nice. Yes. And they say it's reusable, so then you can empty, rinse it, and refill it with coffee. Oh. And take it again on the yes. trip. Yes. For a day or two, no mm -hmm. need to carry all the pots mm -hmm. and things. Especially like on our head of palace when we were carrying the <laughs> mocha pot. <laughs> I still regret it's another 400 grams. We were carrying mocha pot, pot and water. <laughs> uh, amateurs. Let's see if it's drinkable. Okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Warm pool. If you make bananas cook a bit more, like here, then it get, gets this kind of juicy and um, jelly and jammy. But now the banana st is still in uh, okay condition. I, me personally, I like this the best. I want to say that what we experienced last night was was the best Northern Lights experience in my whole life in Lapland. Mm. <coughs> Which is from mm, not just the Northern Lights wise, I think I've seen Yeah, but Northern stronger, Lights experience. But as experience, even though 
I worked so much for providing Northern Lights experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But since 2017 that I'm here in this region, um, I will remember this one. And the rest is just like mass of experiences. And then there, there will be this one, outstanding, all of them. Can I challenge your opinion with an experience that you just now didn't think about, but we had? The igloo. Igloo, Northern Lights hunting, is another experience that Na Nadia and I had. And it's... Uh, I'm gonna link that video in, a, in the description. We went to the forest, very beautiful place. Mm -hmm. We built an igloo and we slept in this igloo and we had amazing northern lights. So these two uh, for me were top of the top. Mm -hmm. Although I have seen northern lights also before, myself also with clients, but uh, guiding for so many years and bringing clients I'm happy when they see it, but it's a different, different experience. It's more like you're seeing them, mm -hmm. but now this is an experience because it's so magical and you do so many, many things <coughs> along mm -hmm. the Northern Lights, seeing, hunting, which uh, has this um, synergy effect to enhance the experience. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For example, if I'm in the city and if I have amazing northern lights and have all these tourists shouting excited all over, it's not nearly as magical <laughs> and memorable as it is what we had last night. Just the fact that we stay in the middle of nowhere, only the two of us. Mm -hmm. And when I went to sleep and I, when I only imagined this tiny wooden hut, <laughs> deep, deep in the forests, and then we are we are there. So it's warm and cozy, and the magic is happening all over, just for us. And it's uh, we. I feel like I'm into the <coughs> uh, eye of the storm, and in the middle of a magic world. You know how I felt. Mm, now that, especially now that you are describing it, mm, it feels like this um, souvenir that you can often find a glass uh, ball, and then <laughs> when you shake it, the snow starts coming. So I felt yesterday someone shook the ball, and there was this tiny hut on the top, and then there was this wind and snow actually. The wind uh, shook quite a bit of snow from the trees. Uh, and then the northern lights and everything is... It felt like it's happening just mm -hmm. right in this bubble. Only around of us. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that we are on a palm of something in this mm -hmm. tiny magical glass bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, I think many people can see the Northern Lights if they're lucky, but uh, I think very few can experience the Northern Lights in a special way because it requires <coughs> physical skills, hiking, mm -hmm. to know where to go, lots of gear. What's your best tip on uh, successful Northern Lights uh, filming, photography? I'm just seeing the Northern Lights. After how many years of experience of guiding? Uh, my tip is to come for a longer time, at least one month. Now I can hear people <laughs> laughing out loud over there. One month? How can they afford such a holiday? And it's going to be so expensive. No, well, then come. No, you know, people come on a three-day holiday. How can, when they should come, how could they increase the chance for coming at the right time and... 
I mean, they cannot predict it. And actually, this industry that <clears throat> makes people book, reserve their places for the trips, buy this Northern Light Safaris. Get, get in a bus with 40 other people and drive Or even 20 not with 40 other town. people, but expecting that you come for three days and it's enough for you to see the Northern Lights. Yeah, it's a lie. These uh, people are extremely lucky. Uh, it, you just have to be lucky in mm -hmm. this case. Sometimes we don't see the Northern Lights for three mm -hmm. weeks. Yeah, and this industry is ki kind of feeding the fire of expectations rising yeah. higher and higher. Because they have a night like this, mm -hmm. they take 1000 yes. photos, all these influencers and marketing uh, producers of uh, the tourism companies, and every other day they post photos of Northern Lights. Mm -hmm. And of course they build the uh, impression that uh, people should expect to see the Northern Lights when they come to the North. And they don't. Yeah, it's not always the case, especially now with winters getting warmer. We've been observing that it gets cloudier and cloudier and um, somehow we had very rarely clear sky this year. Not very often and I'm pretty sure we had a period of this winter of almost a month. Mm -hmm without seeing the Northern Lights, or seeing some tiny bit. So, <clears throat> if you have any questions about the Northern Lights, you can ask us in the comment section below. We'll be happy to answer, because I'm pretty sure we cannot cover uh, everything. And we cannot think of all the questions. Maybe we, we can. I've been uh, working as a Northern Lights guide for eight years now. <laughs> so, I, I, I know. I think I, I'm familiar uh, with this topic and we'll be happy to help. Mm -hmm. And especially for people who come for some, for some filming or photo shooting um, purposes, this is definitely something that at least um, like how to say it can be a little bit predicted when is good time to come but it definitely should be at least one week one week is a minimum yes statistically uh, when we combine many mm -hmm. things we can know when the chances are much higher yeah something like this but any anytime from september mm -hmm. but uh, early september technically from yes. september until, until end of march when people have the chance to see the northern lights <clears throat> of course, there are some periods that I wouldn't recommend people to come. Like this first snowfalls. Yeah, maybe in, late, late in November, December. in December. Mm -hmm. It's not my favorite because it's not that likely to be to have clear sky, mm -hmm. although uh, it's also possible. Yeah. But uh, what about these photographers and videographers who are here to take their best shot of Northern Lights? They definitely should not end up in the mm -hmm. mass tourism industry because uh, you're gonna always be surrounded by noise and light pollution and we will you will not be given the chance to for proper setup yes uh, i think i'm gonna spend some time reading my book and feel the silence of the place and we'll go soon mm -hmm. back to town even now even going back to this such small town uh, like Rovaniemi, it feels like going back to the city. Yeah. It's so uh, overcrowded. Cool. Cool, let's go. Mm -hmm.